All right, so we're back with the Cutlass and the uh, body man is now back from vacation. So he's gonna go ahead and start doing the body work on the actual quarter panel here. You guys know we finished up the uh, parts. We put them in slick sand and he's on this side now doing this quarter. And the other side is already all body worked and we hit it again with an epoxy primer to seal it up. That way it doesn't have any chance of rusting while we're continuing on the quarter panel on the other side on it. So we still, once he gets done over there on the uh, right side here, we're gonna go ahead and uh, do the uh, epoxy primer back over the bare metal spots, and then we're gonna get into the uh, slick sand. So that's the body of the car where we're at with it. And now we're gonna go over to the parts that we had already slick sanded a while back on it, and we're gonna start blocking them out. So this here is the parts. Once you slick sand them and you get the uh, bodywork done and you slick sand them, you're gonna wanna go ahead now and block them out. And you guys see here, we got the hard rigid blocks. You wanna make sure you use a hard rigid block and the longer the better on these big panels like this. These are the same ones that I use on the Cutlass. And uh, we're gonna go ahead now and block them down. We're gonna have a 180 grit scratch on it. That way we don't have to worry about any sand scratch swelling because now we're dealing with different uh, products. And before, when I was telling you guys, you could prime over the 80 and 180 because that's a metal. And this here is now got different substrates on it. So you wanna finish your primer or any type of uh, uh, filler stuff off in a 180 grit or finer. I like a 180 grit, that way it gets a good bite. And uh, we're gonna start off blocking them with the big kid blocks and a 180 grit. And you guys see here, we put them a guide coat on it. That way we can see if we do have any low spots and uh, we'll get those treated if necessary. But I don't think we're gonna have any of those problems with this one. And then we'll show you the stage after this, which will be hitting it with a 2K primer. That way we have something just to scuff for adhesion for the uh, actual paint on this one. So this is the same process we did on the actual Corvette. But this one here was different because this is a metal vehicle and that was fiberglass. So this is been stripped down all the way to the bare metal and we're starting from ground zero on this one. So we're gonna go ahead now and block it out. Barely pushing on it, we're letting the block do the work. Let the block do the sample to do the work. This one here is really good too. And I like this one here because it's got this rigid uh, bar in the middle of it here which keeps it from actually flexing at all and uh, this is the one here that works nice that I use on my uh, cutlass so we have the doors here and then these are the rest of the parts that we're going to be going ahead and getting ready for the uh, final prime on it the hood this came with a slick sand on it from the manufacturer of where the customer picked up this hood and it's a nice steel frame with a fiberglass top on it uh, to uh, duplicate the 442 is what we're going with on this one. So we're gonna go ahead and continue blocking on this and that way we can show you the stage right before the paint job uh, on this here cutlass and that's doing the 2K primer on it. All right, so we're blocking it now and you wanna block it in a cross pattern and it's nice being up here on the actual stands because you can really get a nice block with it you want to block it this way and then you want to block it this way and you want to cross block it to get it the straightest that you can and you guys will see here now why we have the guide coat on it it's going to show you your low spots anywhere you block it it's a little low you're going to be able to see that and then be able to block it and this is the reason why i like using the slick sand product because this stuff here gives you a lot of mills and you're able to block things out and get them laser straight with it so this here is the same stuff that we did on the cutlass when I did my body work on the doors. And you guys will see here at the end that this here guide coat will be fully gone on it. And this will be nice and straight. We'll wet it down. We'll show you how straight it is. And then we'll move into the 2K. And that's how we're gonna do the whole job of the uh, cutlass to get it nice and straight on it. All right, so you guys can see here where we had that one spot that was low is now gone. And that's why you wanna guide coat things. And that's why you wanna use a long block 
with a rigid block on it. You don't want to be using blocks that have Velcro on them because you're going to lose a little bit of uh, the straightness of the car because you have that flex in the actual sandpaper and that will show up when you're trying to get something laser straight. So it's kind of the same thing you think about when you're taking a run out on a car. You want to plane it away with a real hard piece of metal or a real wood block with no flex to get it straight. And that's the same thing you're doing when you're doing body work on a car. Make sure you run your block that way off the panel. You don't want to take it the other way and run it in because you're going to round off the edge as that way there. So one good tip, you guys can see it. Block it off the panel from the inside of the panel heading that way. And that way you won't have any chance of taking this line and rounding off the edge of your door here. Because I have seen cars from time to time where the panels all dome in and uh, you don't want that look for sure. All right, and you'll also use small blocks as well in areas that you do not want to have the long block. Big Kid Blocks makes the nice acrylic blocks that are small as well, and you're able to get in the areas where you don't want to use a large block on it. So we're just going to keep on blocking it. We got most of the door blocked out now, and we use the variety of different sizes, but we still make sure that we're using a hard, rigid block on it. So. All right, so we've got the trunk now blocked. We've got the doors blocked and the fenders are blocked. And I wanted to show you guys, you guys see how I have this trunk here hanging up on one of the innovative tool stands. When you're blocking these trunks or hoods, you wanna make sure you don't put a lot of pressure on them because of the inner structure on these trunks here, how they're made. You have a lot of bracing on the inside of here. And sometimes if you block too hard, you'll have the imprint around the inner trunk on these. So when you press on them, you don't want to press heavy on them. You want to let it glide. So what I like to do is hang the trunk or hang up whatever you're doing. And that way you're not leaning over it and you're not blocking it. And you're just nicely gliding over the top of it and letting the block do the work. So the, all the body work is done now on the quarter panel as well. So we're going to go ahead and hit this with an epoxy. And that way it'll be just like the other side is. And it won't have any chance of rusting. And then we'll get it down in another video, get it over to my area and do the same steps that we did on the doors and on the uh, fenders and all the other parts for it. So you guys are seeing what happens after the slick sand now. And uh, this will be in the prior videos, what we did here from the uh, bare metal to the epoxy to the bodywork. So this is uh, coming along good now. And we're gonna get these parts primed up with the 2K. All right, so we've got everything in here now and uh, final sanded with 180 grit. We went around all the edges and it definitely took some time. You're going to spend some time on this part of the job because this is going to be the uh, way your body work is going to look here because you're blocking it out with the hard blocks and getting it as flat as you can. And you guys see we do have some breakthroughs, but we're going to be treating that now with the 2K. And there really isn't any breakthroughs on this thing as far as metal goes. So you guys can see, and through those areas, that is the epoxy on the actual fender that we put down. So you guys, if you're doing this at home and you get to this stage, you can, if you have a lot of bare metal and you don't want to mix up more epoxy, you can go ahead and hit it with an etch on some of your bare metal edges if you have a lot and then move into your 2K on it. So. We've got all the parts in here now, the doors, the trunk, and uh, everything is ready to hit now with the 2K product. So we're gonna wipe it down with a uh, alcohol cleaner, and then I'm gonna show you guys the primer that we're putting on this for the 2K. All right, so this here's what we're going to be putting on this. This is the K38, and it's a four to one primer. And this is the high build primer surfacer here, the Deltron NXT. So this is what we're using. That's the hardener. And we're going to go ahead and mix it up four to one.
All right, so the primer is all flashed off and it is very, very smooth. And I was using a 1.3 with that. So I like to put down my primer on the final primer uh, stage as flat as possible with no orange peel in it. That way I don't have to sand out all that orange peel when I'm gonna get this thing ready to paint. I like to do all my blocking in the slick sand, get it straight. And then the 2K is just for adhesion to the actual base coat. So we are gonna seal the job. I always put down a sealer as well, but I like getting down my primer as flat as I can because now I'm just gonna knock this down with a couple small soft blocks and go around all my edges and then I'm gonna move right into my paint job. So uh, we're gonna be painting this one actually probably twice the way that I'm gonna do this job. Not really putting down the color twice, but we're gonna be painting this vehicle all apart. Then we're gonna build the vehicle. We're gonna knock it down with 600 grit. We're gonna do all of our stripes and then we're gonna double clear it. So this thing is gonna be beautiful when it's done. So let me take you over there and show you the quarter panel. And so this here is all epoxy prime now. That way this will sit and it won't have any problems if I don't get on it right away. All right, so that's where we're at with the 72 Cutlass. And this week, we're gonna start to put color on this vehicle here. So make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell. That way you'll be up on all these videos of the actual paint on this car because this is gonna be one you're not gonna wanna miss out on. So I hope you guys liked it and we'll see you guys on the next one.